Hi everyone. Today I'd like to show you around Camtasia Studio, which is one of my all-time favorite video editing programs. Uh, it is a very powerful video editor and it will also let you easily create screencasts where you take a video of what's happening on your screen and all of your mouse movements so that you can instruct users how to use your library catalog, use any of your library databases, or pretty much use any computer application or website effectively. So when you start up Camtasia Studio, this is what you get. You get a choice of starting a new project, creating a new recording, or opening and editing an existing project. If you are ready to create a screencast and record your screen, you can click New Recording, and you will get a little prompt that looks like this. You can either select to record the full screen, or what I prefer to do is to do a custom measurement of the screen so that I'm just getting, for example, the area of my desktop that I want to record. So really all I want to record for this screencast is going to be what's within the browser. If I were browsing to a bunch of different websites, I would probably extend this and also include the address bar up here. But the less screen real estate that you attempt to record, the clearer that your screencast is going to be, especially when your video is going to show a lot of text that's on the screen. Um, I'm not going to click record because I'm already recording in Zoom and that will really glitch things up on my computer, but that would be how you would start your recording. It would go ahead and give you a countdown to start recording. And then if you wanted to stop the recording, it would tell you press F10 to stop recording. Then what happens is it brings up a little dialogue with the video that it's just recorded and you can save that video by naming your file or you can delete the video right there. And then once you have created that recording, Camtasia will automatically start a new project for you and bring that in as a new project. Okay, so I've shown you how you can go in and start just with a new recording. You can also click on new project and this will launch Camtasia Studio. And then you can click in here to bring up that little record dialog box again, if you would like to start a new screencast, but that is likely how you would start your screencast. So this is the video editor program. And this is this central box here is where you will see your video. Down here at the bottom, you have an option to set up all sorts of tracks of videos, sounds, narration tracks, music overlays, images, transitions, and so forth. And what you can do is right here in the media bin up at the top left, you can import all sorts of video clips and images and sounds that you want to incorporate into your video. So I'm gonna import some video so that you can see how this works. Okay, so I'm going to actually import the Zoom recording from just a couple minutes ago. Okay, and there it is. I'm going to drag it down to track one and you can see I can put it wherever I would like. Okay, and it will fill out there. I can zoom in a little bit so that I can see the track a little bit better. And you see all of these little mountain ranges here. Those are all areas where I'm talking. So I'm just going to go ahead and click around the video here. Okay. And you can see that I can drag this to any part of the video. So I'll just go ahead and start this and show you how it works. Okay. So if I would like to go back and delete all of that silence and the blank screen at the beginning, I can certainly do that. I'll just take this little scrubber here and then I can extend the green one to the left and then the red one to the right, all the way to the part where I'm gonna start speaking. So I want to delete all of that. So I'll just go to this little scissors right here and click cut. 
And if you make a mistake, don't worry, you can just undo it right there. Okay, but I think that's gonna be good. So I'll start the video over. Okay, so here's another long silence. So I'm gonna extend these here. And I'm not sure what this little mountain range is. So what you can do before you click cut is you can click play when you've got a highlighted portion and it will play just that portion. So let's see what's there. Okay, and that's just me kind of clearing my throat. So the viewer really doesn't need to have that part on the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and click cut. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so that is just some basic video editing. And if any of you have had previous video editing experience, you'll know that all of these applications work in a very similar way. There are tracks, you can cut and delete portions, you can add transitions. So later on in the process, I will have multiple recordings that I will be wanting to stitch together, perhaps with a transition or just removing some of the extra blank areas. So right now, I just have this one video clip Okay, that's three minutes and 36 seconds long right now before I've finished editing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the next part of this lesson. I'm doing it in parts so that I can have some video to play around with to show you. So I'll just click on the plus here to import more media. Okay, and now that that is imported, I can just go ahead and drag it down to right here, right after the previous clip. Okay, so right now I have these two clips flowing into each other pretty seamlessly. But if I wanted to have some sort of transition in between those two, I could easily do that by clicking up here, transitions. And actually before I do anything else, I'm gonna save this project. And you can think about projects sort of like when you are in Photoshop and you want to save an image that you're working on with all of the different layers so that when you come back later on, you can still edit it before you save it as something like a JPEG, for example, you would save it as a Photoshop document. So this project will hold all of these instructions for accessing the different video clips, all of the edits that I'm going to do, all of the transitions, while all of these individual video clips remain the same. I'm not actually making any changes to the video clips. I'm just bringing them into a project and telling Camtasia that I want to make adjustments for this particular video that I'm creating out of these different clips. So, okay. If I want to put a transition here, I can click up here and go to transition. And then I've got all sorts of choices here. I really like some of these like pixelate checkerboard blinds so that it's pretty obvious that I'm going from one thing to another. So what I'll do is I will just place this marker where I want the transition to be centered. And I'll click on pixelate and that I will be able to drag down to in between the clips. Right now, that's how long it is between the clips. I can pull these and make it even longer if I want. So let me show you what that will look like. Okay, so I can make that even longer if I'd like. All right, so those are some transitions. I can also make annotations, uh, which you will definitely be seeing on my videos because if I forget to point something out on a screencast that I think is important, I can go in post-production and I can drag over an annotation and I can point to it. And then I can just type in text here. And then that will be there that creates it on another track and I can make that sit there for however long 
I want just by pulling this to make it shorter or longer. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, and those are annotations. You can add more advanced behaviors for a text that you will add that you want to add to your video. You can make them fly in, fly out, explode. You can set all sorts of different animations. One animation that I do want to point out to you is the zoom and pan. And that is if you want to zoom in on a particular area of your website, you can do that by just clicking here and zooming in. And you can move this over to the area of the website that you'd like. You can even make it smaller and more custom. Okay, and you can see that it's added that down here. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, but now what you want to do is you want to add another another animation so that it zooms back out. So let me do that. All right, and let's see what we've got. Okay, and you can check out the other animations menu here. So those are the important and basic features and functionality. And I'm just going to show you one more thing, actually two more things. How to do an intro, and I'm going to go all the way back here to the beginning. Because you'll always want to have a title slide, and you can access those in the library. So if you click on intros, there are some canned intros that you can edit here. And I really like these. You can also create your own image in something like Photoshop for a title slide and then upload it and put it on this same track right before the video starts. But I, I really like these. So I'll show you what these look like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this video file over a little bit. Actually, I'll have to move all of them that I have. So I'm going to create a little bit of room here just by dragging. Okay, and then I have room to put the title animation or title slide that I want right here. And now I can move these back. When you move anything, though, you do want to make sure if you have anything else that you have created on another track that you move that as well. And I do have a call out that we created. So I want to make sure that that ends up in the right spot eventually. OK, but let me show you what this looks like now. So here you have your intro and what you might want to do and what you will want to do is adjust the text here. Okay, so now what we've got. Okay, and you can play around with some of the other ones, but you can also here add some intro music if you'd like. That's also in this library area. Minimize that. Music tracks. OK, so that might be nice. I will add that to track two. And I probably don't want it to go for the entire video. So I'll just drag it to be however long I want. Okay, and I will make it about as long as the intro slide. You can also adjust the volume right here. And we can create fades and transitions in between both of these so that the music gets softer and these red triangles fade a little bit. So going back to transitions. I'll create a transition 
a visual transition here. in between the red triangles and the first video clip. Okay, and I think I would make that even longer. And then for the audio, or for the music, uh, we will just put it down to 53% so that it's not so loud. And then if, if we want it to get lower toward the end of it, we can right click it, add an audio point, and then adjust from there. And you can see how you can just drag that so that it's lower. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. And then the same for the end credits. I'll just zoom all the way over to the end here of our video. And also in the library, there are some outros. So you can drag one of those and adjust all of the text and then see what that looks like. You can also put a transition in there as well. Okay, and that's how to create a canned video for instruction for screencasts. You can also use this just to edit video as well. So when you are creating different programming, anything from maker topics to interviews to, to story times, you can bring all of those videos in here and you can edit them add intros, music, outros, and even for your live programs that you have uh, for Facebook Live or created on any of these applications live, you can then bring in the file afterward and, and do some editing if you'd like as well. And the final piece, how do you actually turn this into a video? Well, when you are all done doing all of your editing, adding everything that you would like, you want to click up here where it says share and you can share it to any one of these options, YouTube, screencast.com, Google Drive. What I do is I will click into local file so that I can save it locally to my hard drive. And then you can put in whatever your editing dimensions that you would like. So I always like to do it the most high definition choice that they give me. So I do up to 1080p and I do just the MP4. I don't do it with its own player. Just the MP4 file is enough for me. And then you would click next and it will render your video for you. And that's it. Thanks for watching.